Hello, my name is Lano, and you're watching Lano's Corner. This is a different kind of video today. As you can probably tell from the cover image, I'm going to be redrawing some of my old art, and so I've made some speed draws to do that. I don't have a lot to say about the first image, so I'm just going to start the recording, and then I will talk about the project over the drawing. So as many of you know, I have spent the past year and a half recovering from a fairly severe injury, and it forced me to stop doing a lot of the things that I loved, including art. And I really wanted to start drawing again, and I especially wanted to do videos like this because I've spent a lot of time during my recovery period watching videos exactly like this, and I think they're really fun. I love watching people draw and listening to them talk about their characters and their stories and things like that, and I also want to do that. But I need to completely rehabilitate myself because I've lost basically all of the strength and dexterity and control that I had in my hands and my arms from not being able to use them. So I decided to rehabilitate myself by doing a redraw project where I trace the steps of my art journey. So between the years of 2004 and 2018, which is almost every year that I've been drawing, I have picked one image to redraw. And I did have some rules, so the first rule was that whenever possible, I wanted to pick a piece that I was really proud of. I'm not the kind of person who dislikes my old art or thinks it's cringe or anything like that, but I still wanted to pick pieces that I particularly like. So a lot of them are actually things that I consider some of the best things I've ever produced, and I may or may not actually be able to do a better job. We'll just have to see. The second rule was that I didn't want to repeat content as much as possible. So that goes for stories, for characters, even kind of for the sort of layout of the pieces. I want to come through this with a fairly nice little portfolio when I'm done. And in addition to getting back what I used to be able to do, maybe I will actually improve. That is the goal. These are going to be starting off simpler and getting harder as I go along because, again, this is for me to be able to draw again, and it would suck to try and do this project and injure myself all over again by pushing it too hard. Although, to be honest, I kind of did do that for the second two pieces. I did them in one sitting instead of multiple sittings, which I should have done, but whatever. So the first three are kind of simple, and I'm going to be bringing in more of my tricks and things that I do as I go along. Also, all of these pieces are going to be colored in marker because that is the media that I'm the most used to using. And yeah, that's what I want to do. I don't use anything else anymore. I haven't really used anything else for years. So regardless of what the original images were, they're all marker now. This is also more of a reconceptualization than a straight redraw. I want to make it fun. I think this idea is fun, and, and to make it as likely as possible for me to complete it, I want to make it as fun as possible. So some of these, if I can't really think of anything, will just be a straight redraw, especially these first three. But a lot of them will be, what would I do if I had come up with this idea today? So that's what we're working with. I think that's about all that I have to say about the project for the moment. I'm going to try and get all of the videos about the same length of time. I can't do it exactly, but I'll try to get them no longer than 15 minutes. And I'm doing 15 pieces all together, so I'm putting these up in sets of three. So it'll be five videos, and then after that I'll go and do some other art-related stuff that isn't this. But I'm starting with this. So far, I've been working at the pace of about one piece every week. I don't know if I'm going to continue that. We'll just have to see how long it takes me to get through. Now, as for this particular piece, this is a filler character design for a species that a friend and I ran at the time. I was really aggressive about deleting my old art from like 2005 and earlier, so I had three images to pick for 2004, and they were all exactly like this. So I just picked one of them, 
she was a baby in the original, so I decided to draw her as an adult this time. Both of her parents are quite stocky, so I made her quite stocky as well. Just kind of, I had a lot of fun. I went off with the stripes a little bit, because I love drawing stuff like that. But she was never used as an actual character. And as you can probably tell, this is not 100% a horse. She is, well, they're shapeshifters, essentially. They're magical animals, um, because that was what we did back then. But even so, I found it really funny how quickly this piece came together, because I love horses, and I love drawing horses, and the building blocks for how I draw a horse in my style are so deeply ingrained in me that I don't even need them anymore. And it's not like I didn't make mistakes. Of course I did. There are some issues, especially with that back leg being a little too long, but you know, whatever. This whole image took me 30 minutes and 16 seconds, and I, I just thought that was really funny because, again, I had not drawn anything in almost two years, honestly, and I just... I can just draw a horse so fast. It's so easy for me. I've drawn so many of them in my life, and I had a really... <laughs> I had a lot of fun drawing it. Again, I love horses, so I also have a caveat to make. In this video, you'll see me using a lot of Copic markers, but despite the fact that everybody and their grandmother says they are the best art markers, I actually don't like them. The reason that I'm using them for this video is because they make the best skin tones out of any marker company that I've tried, and so most of my browns and creams are Copics, but generally, I use Prismacolor, that's what I've been using since 2006. I really like them, so you won't see me use this many Copics in future videos because I just don't like the way they look when they're completed. For me, I really like nice, smooth, bright, clean colors, and Prismacolor is the best for that as far as I'm concerned. So this video is not indicative of my usual art supplies and art process. As for everything else, I use normal printer paper, a normal mechanical pencil, micron pens, and then this big thick pen is a, what is it, Z4, it's a 0.7 Z4 roller pen, and unfortunately this is my last one because they don't make them anymore. I do have some other roller pens, I'm sure they're all about the same, but I just like this because I think it makes my colors look a lot brighter when it has a nice thick outline and it makes it look really clean. So this is pretty much my usual process and my usual supplies, despite the fact that I don't generally use Copics. And there's the completed piece. I think it turned out very well. I had a lot of fun. I still didn't have a lot to choose from for 2005, so I picked this piece, and I am changing it up a little bit. The character in the front is Viper. He belongs to someone who was at the time my friend and is now my friend and my roommate. And the character in the back supposedly is mine, but I don't remember her at all, so I'm replacing her with a character that is more appropriate and makes more sense, which is Viper's sister Vengeance, who is mine. This was a thing that our friend group did. We all had one, they were all siblings, they were all black and a color. I am changing Vengeance's color to be pink because I like pink, and if I were to make her up today, I would make her pink. There's a reason that she was the color that she used to be, and there's a reason that I don't want her to be that color anymore. But her design, other than that, is exactly the same. I'm not putting up a picture of her old design, I'm just letting you know for posterity, I guess, that her design is the same. It's just the colors that are a little bit different. Now, as you can probably tell, my friends and I, for the most part, did not start drawing because of anime. We started drawing because of The Lion King and, like, Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. So I had kind of a different art journey than a lot of people because I started with drawing Disney-style animals and not people, and I didn't really draw people until much later. This, this also, just like a horse, this came fairly quickly, although I hadn't... 
drawn lions in a while and I hadn't adapted them to my style, so I had a lot of trouble with the eyes. I kind of... I tried to do something sort of in between, and then I went and did the Lion King style eyes, and I didn't like either of them, so I just sort of did whatever. But then after that, I completely forgot that they're supposed to have colored patches around their eyes, so that's my fault, I guess, but I still think the drawing turned out really cute. And when I started drawing, we originally were on this website, which was the Lion King Fan Art Archive, and it was a great place for a young artist. It was super welcoming and super friendly and fun at the beginning, and there wasn't a lot of, like, snobbery or elitism, so no matter what, like, you would get people cheering you on no matter how bad your art was, and I think that helped me build up a lot of confidence before I switched over to using bigger sites like DeviantArt in 2006, but I just found this drawing to be so... it made me so happy. If I took this back to 2005 and I showed myself that someday I would be able to draw lions like this, do you know how happy that would have made me as a kid? This was exactly the kind of stuff that I wanted to be drawing at the time and I didn't have the skill to do it. And so something about this was just so satisfying to go back to my roots and make a piece that I would have done anything to be able to do back when I was 13 or 14 or whenever. But uh, yeah, I just, I really loved this. I, I made Viper look a little emo, but I guess I kind of did in the original too, but I love how his puffy hair turned out. And then afterwards, I ended up giving this picture to my roommate as a gift, and he absolutely loved it. It also made him so happy. So regardless, this, this was just a good piece for everybody. This is just a piece that brought so much joy to me and, and also to my roommate to visit these characters again. And as I said, all of my friends, we all had a sibling. And the Lion King fan art archive is still there, so when I was trying to pick out a piece, I ended up going not only through my gallery, but also through the galleries of all of my friends. And the internet was such a different place in 2005. It was wild. We all had completely different sets of characters that none of us use anymore. And we also all had a completely different way of interacting with each other and our art and the internet in general. So like the comments that we would put up with our art are just so different. It was, it's really like a time capsule to go back and visit an old art gallery like that. It was a lot of fun. I, I just really liked everything about this, the, the research for it, figuring out how to do it, drawing it itself, just all of it was so much fun. It kind of made me want to draw more lions. I haven't really done very many, but this just sort of made me want to draw more of them, honestly. I don't really know, because this is the first time I'm doing something like this, I don't really know what the best possible formatting is. Is this formatting okay? Would it be better if I had some music or something in the background so when I run out of things to say temporarily there's not big silence? Does that matter? Do people care? Also, is the camera, like, okay, well the camera is what it is, but the lighting? I don't know. The lighting in the office is really bad and I liked this light that I have it set to because it's really, really bright, and so it made it easy for me to see, because I just, I really can't see very well to color in the office with the, the natural lighting and the light that we have in here. But it seems like on the actual videos themselves, the colors are pretty washed out, so it might be better to switch. I didn't wanna switch in the middle of a video, so all of these are the same lighting, but I might try and do one of the other ones and see if maybe it comes across better for the next set. So I might just, the lighting might just be different in every single one of these until I find 
the best one. I feel like this video didn't do too badly because so much of it is the, these dark grays and blacks, but especially I noticed when I was filming the third one, it, I feel like it's really kind of washed out. So that's, those are some things, some things that need to be worked on. As for the video editing, well, again, this is my first time putting something together like this. And so I'm still learning. Hopefully, I feel like I did pretty good getting the the quality, but we'll just, we'll see. Some of it might change a little bit as we go along. I'm just gonna keep going until I find the best, the best format and, and the best everything. This was something that I wanted to do because like I said, I watched a lot of these videos and I thought they were really fun, but I also wasn't sure that I would actually like commit to doing it especially because it's so much easier to do this digitally, obviously. So I just bought this kind of like mid-range webcam and I figured if I do enough of these videos or if people like them enough, then I'll get a better camera in the future. But for now, this is what I have. And for the most part, it does fine, except for when it auto focuses and everything gets blurry. But I'm not going to spend money on a fancy camera unless I do enough work to actually, like, you know, be worth it. So hopefully this isn't too jarring for people. Uh, this was the best that I could do with the budget that I gave myself for this project. Yeah, I don't think I have uh, too much more to say about this one. This is just, it was just a drawing that made me happy. And it's always good to do things that make you happy. My general rule for writing and for art is just to do whatever I want. I do whatever makes me happy because if you get focused on doing things that'll make you popular or whatever, you're just, you never know what it, what you'll end up being if you start doing stuff for, for the attention of others. So you should really be more self-indulgent. And that is truly who I am as a person. Two thousand and six is the last year for this particular art roundup. And this is probably not the image that I would have picked out, except for the fact that this was one of the first sort of full pictures that I did with marker. I had stuff that I did before this that was, you know, kind of better or like more interesting as I was experimenting with stuff and learning how to use them, but they were all like small little sketches and I wanted to do a full illustration. So this is the one that I picked because it was pretty much the first full illustration that I turned out with markers. Unfortunately, these are characters that I do not care about and I barely cared about at the time. So their names are Xenix and Demarque and they are from a story of mine that it's straight up not going to happen. It's not good. It won't happen. And the only characters that I care about from it are some like really weirdo side characters and even them I haven't drawn since like 2010 maybe so it it straight up isn't happening but uh they are like divine avatars or whatever obviously in, in this case uh fire and air as you can see there are quite a few of there are quite a few gods um and there were only I think only the the four elemental ones had verified avatars at that point, and that was like kind of part of the plot, but I just, I just really don't care. I just don't care about these two. Also, I know I said in my Genshin video, I don't know how much overlap there is. I don't know if anybody's watching my videos that isn't already my friend, but you know, I said in my Genshin video, I like making fashion. I love world building and I love fashion design for my characters, but this particular story had literally no cohesion whatsoever. It was like every character had their own vibe. By this point, I hadn't actually started caring about world building yet to the extent that I will later. 
So I made no effort to make these characters look like they belonged in the same universe. And so I also just kind of did whatever for the fashion for this one. I I did what I wanted to to color, basically. I, so this isn't really indicative of the kind of setting that they were in, but also I just straight up don't care. I'm sorry, this is so mean. Sometimes you just have characters that... It's just whatever, man. Also, I think this one, you'll see at various points throughout the video, brings up something interesting to me about how the media that you use to do art really kind of influences your art itself. So I use markers, which are extremely fast to dry, and so I'm very fast when it comes to creating art. And I also, I don't tend to fuss about things endlessly. When you do digital art, you have a lot of control and ability to change things. And so it gives you the ability to be really finicky and, and to make things really perfect. But when you use markers, what you get is what you get. And I, so I've always drawn really fast and I don't generally do a ton of corrections. You'll see the sketch in here is, is sort of the most I do is I'll, I'll ink parts that I like and then continue fixing parts that I don't like, but I don't do it a lot. I don't do it forever. You know, what's, what's good enough is good enough. And you'll also see when I start coloring that there's times when in some cases I go over the lines by quite a bit. And I just, I don't really worry about that stuff. It doesn't upset me if I make a mistake. You can fix things or you can't. Generally with markers, you can't, but it's fine. You know, I, I do what I do. And, and that's also part of the reason why I like those big, thick outlines, because it does help me uh, cover up a lot of times when I go over the lines. And some of it was, I'll admit, I'm not usually this bad. My hands, you can't really tell from these because they're sped up so much, but my hands are still really weak. And so they do shake a lot as I'm trying to do this and so some of it was just I went over the lines because it's hard for me to hold my hands steady and that's you know kind of like the whole point of this project is to get that back but some of it's also just because I don't care about you know making mistakes and so even though I, I draw extremely fast um, I've always considered my art experience to be very chill because I don't ever I never get stuck on stuff and I don't beat myself up for mistakes. And that is, I think, entirely due to markers because I I ended up coloring fast, so then everything else ended up being fast too. I, you know, I ended up with a media that's pretty unforgiving, so if I make a mistake, well, too bad. <laughs> I'm not going to redraw the picture, so I just have to live with it, so now the mistakes don't really bother me that much. Man, I don't like the fact that, uh, I, I wanted to do not gray for the, the shading on their fur, and I thought it would be cool to do, like, you know, he has cool colors and she has warm colors because that's the elements that they represent, but then it ended up being, like, this combined with the previous one, which also is blue and pink, is just, man, <laughs> It just seems real, like, gender heteronormative, and, and I'm, I don't live that life, you know, but this is just kind of what happened. It's my fault, I guess. I like the color pink a lot, so I use it all the time. You'll also see a lot where, like, about right now, I use the, the wide end of the markers, and that was something that I really rebelled against. When I first started using markers, I looked up tutorials and stuff, and that was one I saw a lot was like, feel free, like, do use the wide end. And I was like, no, you can't, you can't get detail with that, but you totally can, and it makes it so much easier. And I wish that I had gotten used to that idea earlier, and I would have saved myself so much trouble, honestly. But uh, I didn't, so here we are. Another unpopular marker opinion for me is that I don't really like brush tips. I forgot that my new black marker is a brush tip, and so when I opened it to do the hair and everything, I was just like, oh no. 
Uh, so I, I may do, but I like the, the actual, what is it called, the chisel tip, I think. Yeah, I like those a lot better. Another thing about me is that I love patterns in my clothing, in my art. I do consider that to be kind of like a hallmark of my style is that I love fabric patterns. So I just really wanted to do some patterns here. And actually, I think I only have like three pictures of Xenix and the one of her that I drew before this one, she was also wearing a blue plaid skirt. So that's kind of where this came from. But I mean, mostly it was just like, these are colors I have that will make a nice plaid. And I also use gel pens to make the lines and they're glitter gel pens. And then there, you can't see it on here, but there's glitter all over this that got tracked there from my hands after doing those stupid stripes. So the whole thing kind of sparkles a little bit. Um, and for him, I just, I went with some stripes in this nice orange that I have. It's called Mineral Orange. It's a color that I like a lot. It's a little desaturated, although on the video it looks really bright, but in real life it's not very bright and I enjoy that aspect of it. And I really, I hadn't done any shading in either of the previous two because again, I'm making these more difficult as I go along. So I really wanted to get at least like some basic shading for this. I can do better than this with markers. I can do more interesting things with shading and color mixing and I promise that you will see some of those things as we go along. It's what I it's what I love to do. I love lots of bright pretty colors and I also love lots of patterns and so my art can be very like bright and busy sometimes but that's what I like. And again, I do this for myself. You can see I just fixed the part by her skirt with a white gel pen so that I can do the dots without it causing any issues. Gel pen is your best friend if you work with markers, honestly. And I really, I did intend to do more with this background. I had a, a couple different blues picked out, so I was going to do like a gradient of blue, which is usually what I do when I do this kind of stippled background. I don't generally just do one color. But again, I did this in a single sitting when I had originally planned on doing it over two days. So I was just kind of, my hands hurt a lot. I was tired. Honestly, I had even like well before this point, I was tired and thinking that I should stop. So I ended up just doing the one blue, but at least it's kind of a background. At least I sort of got a background out of here and that's more than I can say for the first two. So yeah, we are, the goal is being accomplished. I am getting better and more complex illustrations as time goes on. The next one, I'm trying to think, yes, the next one, 2007, will have a completely filled background. That is a promise. It's not a super difficult background, but it will be complete. And I think that's a good progression. Yeah, I, even though I don't, I don't care about these characters, I haven't drawn them in years and I probably will not draw them again. I'm never going to turn this book into anything, but I still feel like this was pretty good. I still think it turned out really well. And I'm generally pretty pretty pleased about it. I think, you know, they look cute. And that's all you can ask, really, sometimes. That's all I need, anyway. So yeah, there's the final image for this one. Thank you guys for watching this long. I hope you could have a pretty good time. I'm gonna keep doing this whether people watch it or not, but of course I always love it when people watch things. And here's all three of them, a little selection. So not bad at all for the first step in this project. Anyway, this is Lano signing off. Thank you for listening.